Hey, Mayor Adams is calling for a change to the city's sanctuary city policy. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. The mere fact we cannot share with ICE that this person has committed three robberies. The leader of the crew, identified as Victor Parra, will blast out a message via WhatsApp that he is looking for phones. Several arrests in dozens of robberies across New York City. Those arrested are all migrant. Expanding Corporation. New York Mayor Eric Adams is ready to reverse decades of sanctuary city policy that prevents local law enforcement officials from collaborating with federal immigration authorities. We can't have the small number of migrants and asylum seekers that have been identified as dangerous under the law, he said at a news conference Tuesday. There is nothing you can do about it because you cannot tell ICE, he said, referring to immigration and customs enforcement. Hey, Mayor Adams is calling for a change to the city's sanctuary city policy. I don't believe people who are violent in our city and commit repeated crimes. He wants more cooperation with federal immigration officials after several migrants were arrested in high-profile crimes. The mere fact we cannot share with ICE that this person has committed three robberies. Our civil liberties are not up for debate here. People have the right to due process. The city's laws were meant to protect the city's immigrant population by limiting how local agencies can assist in federal detention and deportation efforts. The sanctuary policies have drawn intense backlash from conservatives in recent weeks following some high-profile incidents involving migrants, including a brawl with police and a shooting in Times Square. Adams' comments are a shift from three decades of New York City mayoral administrations, which began supporting sanctuary city policies in 1989 when Mayor Ed Koch issued an executive order preventing city agencies from sharing information about migrants with federal immigration authorities. Muzaffar Chisti, a senior fellow at the Migration Policy Institute at the NYU School of Law, said other mayoral administrations followed suit by implementing policies that give city agencies greater discretion to resist immigration enforcement. Adams is saying he wants to go back to a pre-de Blasio level of cooperation with the federal government, Chisti said, referring to former mayor Bill de Blasio. Him saying I'll hand over even the accused goes beyond anything in the past. Marlene Galaz, the director of immigrant rights policy at the New York Immigration Coalition, said Adams' comments put targets on migrant communities' backs and misinformed New Yorkers about how sanctuary city laws work. We're really concerned about the mayor fanning the flames of hate and tensions that already exist in the city, she said. Galaz said sanctuary city policies make cities safer by ensuring that migrants are comfortable reporting crimes and acting as witnesses in criminal investigations without fear of deportation. She referred to a 2017 study by the Center for American Progress, which found that counties with sanctuary policies experience 35.5 fewer crimes per 10,000 people on average than those that lack such policies. Any change in the city's ability to collaborate with federal immigration authorities would require passage by the city council, which said Wednesday it has no plans to revisit these laws. At a news conference February 8th, City Council Speaker Adrian Adams rejected rhetoric from city and state officials who advocated for reversing sanctuary city policies after the arrests of seven migrants in the Times Square attack on two New York police officers. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. These laws have been in effect for decades. We believe in them. A group of five men have been arrested, accused of attacking a group of New York City police officers. We are not considering laws, changes to laws. Now there's a fear looming that the men involved with that attack could avoid being brought to justice. These bipartisan city policies have no connection to this incident, the speaker said. City law does not interfere with the criminal legal process or any federal immigration law. I can assure you that the New York City Council has no power to change the U.S. Constitution. The mayor said he would allow New York City law enforcement to work with federal immigration authorities to deport migrants suspected of crimes or before they have undergone due process. They didn't give due process to the person that they shot or punched or slayed, Adams said, in response to a reporter who asked about the implications of his proposed legal change for due process. There's just a philosophical disagreement here. Some of the city's Republican U.S. representatives have spoken in favor of Adams' proposed change. 
Republican Nicole Maliotakis suggested Tuesday on X that Adams should take executive action or give the city council legislation to repeal sanctuary city laws. Similarly, Republican council member Joanne Ariola of Queens said she supports Adams' view that ICE should be able to collaborate with law enforcement officials to deport migrants accused of crimes before they have been convicted. When a migrant has used a knife on someone at a base camp or has brutally beaten a police officer and it is on tape, I don't think that they are entitled to any due process, Ariola said. They entered our country illegally, they are now committing violent crimes in our country, and therefore ICE needs to get involved and they need to be deported. The five other Republican city council members could not be reached for comment. Kenneth Ganallo, the director of the city's ICE Enforcement and Removal Field Office, said in a statement that he welcomes opportunities to work with the mayor to remove those who pose public safety threats to the city. Venezuelan Gangs Expansion The New York City has been experiencing a crime wave with moped-riding bandits stealing people's phones and speeding off. In one particularly brazen attack, moped-riding bandits dragged a 62-year-old woman down a Brooklyn street in December. After the phones are stolen, the victim's bank accounts are drained of cash with fraudulent transactions in both the U.S. and South America, and the phones themselves are sent to Colombia to be wiped, reprogrammed, and sold. Now, the pattern of robberies is being linked by law enforcement to a brutal Venezuelan gang that is sending its members to New York as part of the migrant wave. Until recent weeks, police had been concerned about rises in thefts and robberies in the city being linked to low-level unorganized criminals who were among the estimated 170,000 migrants who have arrived in the city since the start of 2023. The brutal Venezuelan Tren de Aragua gang has moved into New York by having its members cross the southern border and claim asylum, and is likely behind many of the moped robberies. It is the only new gang so far being tracked among the new migrant arrivals in the city, sources say. The NYPD has not discussed the gang publicly, but at a briefing last week, senior officers described a pattern of moped robberies which the Post is told have the hallmarks of Trendy Aragua. Several arrests in dozens of robberies across New York City. Those arrested are all migrant. These thieves would ride up behind their victims on the sidewalk, steal their property, and then make their getaway. In this alleged crime spree, the NYPD says 13 men and a woman were behind a lucrative robbery ring. NYPD walking this duo, 20-year-old Alexander Daker and 24-year-old Roxana Sejos. The small number of people are breaking the law and having a huge impact on our public safety. Migrants who allegedly attacked a police officer and lieutenant in Times Square last week are at the center of concerns they could be linked to Tren de Aragua. Tren de Aragua, meaning Aragua Train, started in 2012 among trade union members in the Aragua province of Venezuela, who turned a planned railroad into an opportunity for grift. The Venezuelan government officially sees it as a criminal enterprise and sent 11,000 soldiers on September 23 last year to take back a prison under the gang's control in Tocoron, in the country's interior. Their criminal practices have shocked even the most hardened in South America, particularly their willingness to slay women. In Colombia, the gang has put gruesome images of its torture and murders on social media, such as this image of a man tortured with his hands bound by the cord from hair straighteners. Tren de Aragua, a ruthless gang from Venezuela, has been distributing warnings on letters with a logo and an AK-style rifle as letterheads in South America. When owners do not pay, their employees are kidnapped, tortured, and dismembered. In Lima, Peru, a transgender adult worker was shot 31 times, leading to a bloodbath. In Chile, dismembered victims' bones have been found in cement at building sites. The gang began making their way from Venezuela to the southern U.S. border in 2017 with nearly 2,800 encounters with Venezuelan migrants at the border. From October 2022 to September 2023, Tren de Aragua played a key part in trafficking many from Venezuela. Border Patrol agents apprehended 41 Tren de Aragua members crossing the border between October 2022 and September 2023. The group is so brazen that a Texas state anti-gang task force recently documented them charging fellow Venezuelans to use federal toilet facilities at the border. Trendy Aragua members are recruiting criminals in New York City's migrant shelters, 
using the surge of new arrivals to recruit criminals. The NYPD's chief of detectives, Joseph Kenny, revealed that 62 robberies in the city since November 2023, 34 of them in Manhattan, had been linked to a single group of at least 14 people who used two-man moped crews to snatch victims' phones and purses. The gang members, most of whom were living in migrant shelters, received orders via WhatsApp from a mastermind identified as Victor Para, a 30-year-old Venezuelan migrant who arrived last year. The leader of the crew, identified as Victor Para, will blast out a message via WhatsApp that he is looking for phones. 62 robberies where the robbers are accused of sneaking up on their unsuspecting victims, mostly women, on mopeds. Power will send out specific orders for what type of phone he is looking for. They're essentially ghost criminals. No criminal history, no photos. Those involved are accused of snatching their purses and their phones all to make money while the mastermind behind it remains on the loose tonight. The crime wave began with scooter operators making $100 a day and the actual phone snatchers making between $300 to $600 per phone that is stolen. The gang recruiters may also have phone numbers for many of the migrants who come to New York, allowing them to blast mass WhatsApp messages to scores or hundreds of people at a time. Trend Aragua has been gaining attention in the U.S. and South America due to the theft of stolen phones. The gang's fronts deal with stolen phones from across South America and now the U.S. The phones are sent to Bogota, where they are wiped, reprogrammed, and sold by Trendy Aragua operatives. The NYPD warns that the robbery gangs are ghosts with no criminal history, photos, cell phones, or social media. Of the 14 identified as being in the gang, seven have been arrested and Vera remains on the run. NYPD sources say migrants have exploited the ID NYC scheme by getting different IDs at the Roosevelt and Floyd Bennett Field shelters. Statistics show robberies up 9% citywide in 2024, from 1,164 to 1,278, compared to the same period in 2023 and 14% in the same period in 2022. Grand larcenies, theft of more than $1,000, were also up 1.6%. Trend de Aragua's leader, Nino Guerrero, is wanted by Venezuelan authorities and has an Interpol red notice requesting his arrest. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.